All right, so we're going to talk about the ideal gas law. And um, the one word that might stick out to you is the word ideal. Uh, so we're going to talk about ideal gases versus real gases and gases in real life. So ideally, when thinking about back on the kinetic molecular theory, uh, there are two things postulates within that kinetic, kinetic molecular theory that were kind of iffy or untrue. One of them was that gas particles have virtually no volume, and we're going to basically have calculations where they do volume of the gas particles does not count. They're negligible. We know that's not true. Gas particles do have some sort of volume. We know it's really small, but we know that uh, ga real gas particles actually do contain some sort of volume. Um, and also, ideally, in an ideal world, they, we're saying that um, gas particles have no intermolecular forces, meaning that they don't attract or repel from each other. And we know that's not true. All gas particles and all, um, all uh, molecules actually have some sort of way that they are attracted or repelling from each other, called IMFs. Um, so really, that's not really true. But in most cases, real gases actually behave extremely similarly to ideal gases. And so we can actually use those ideal gas conditions in when we're making our calculations. They're pretty accurate. However, the only time that they are um, not accurate is when we're dealing with high pressure situations or low temperature situations. The reason high pressure situations are, are different is because when, those, when you have high pressure, those gas particles are being pushed together. And those intermolecular forces are going to start playing a major role. Also, when you're dealing with low temperatures, those gas particles will start slowing down, and they will start containing some sort of volume that is negligible, and those IMFs will start playing a part, too. So in these two scenarios, we can't use the ideal conditions. Otherwise, we can t use them all the time, which we're going to start doing. All right, so let's compare. Um, let's say you have a gas. You're using our com combined gas law, let's say you have a gas and you don't have anything to compare it to. Um, <clears throat> we can compare. We can always compare the gas law, any gas, to its conditions at STP or standard temperature and pressure. And don't forget those uh, those conditions are one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals or 760 millim millim millimeters of mercury for your pressure. Um, our molar volume will always be, no matter what gas we're talking about, 22.4 liters. And our temperature will always be 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius, but we like things in Kelvin because it's always positive that way. So if we were to replace one of these guys, one of these um, P pressure times volume over temperature with our conditions at STP, we get a certain number. And depending on our pressure, whatever unit of pressure we're talking about, we get different numbers. So we get, if we're using atmospheres, we get 0 0.0821. If we're dealing with kilopascals, we get 8.314. If we're dealing with millimeters of mercury or tors, we get 62.4. And we're going to, since this always, will always be the case, we're going to just make it a constant. And we're going to use the letter R to denote that constant. So when we're dealing with, I'm going to grab a pen. When we're dealing with um, the combined gas law and we want to actually compare something to a, a situation in a, in a, at STP, I can just replace this PV over T with the letter R. So in this case, I'm going to say P1 times V1 over T1 equals R. Okay, great. But let's say we're talking about uh, um, one mole of gas. If we're talking about one mole of gas, this all works fine because at one mole of gas, our volume is 22.4 liters. Great. But what if we're talking about two moles of gas. We're going to have to multiply this number by two because we're multiplying that 22.4 liters by two. Let's say we're talking about a thousand liter, a thousand moles. We have to multiply this whole thing by a thousand. We're talking about 0.55 moles. Multiply this whole thing by 0.55. So essentially we're just multiplying by the number of moles that we have in our, in our um, sample. So we're going to say the letter N denotes the number of moles we have in our sample. Okay, so if I rearrange this to make it much more um, easy, to, um, easy to write down and remember, I'm going to rearrange this and bring the T over. So I'm going to say PV equals NRT. Some people call it PIVNERT to remember the ideal gas law. So this the combination of things is the ideal gas law. It's basically just the combined gas law rearranged using the conditions of STP for R. Okay, so this actually uses, the ideal gas law uses all four variables. We have volume, pressure, uh, number of moles, and temperature dealing with all this. This uh, number of moles is the first time it's been introduced. Uh, the other gas laws don't have the number of moles within them. So this actually is very, very useful. So let's go over here and do a problem with them. All right, so our problem is, what is the pressure in atmospheres of a 0 0.108 mole sample of helium gas at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius if its volume is 0 0.505 liters? Okay, I know right away this is an ideal gas law problem. How do I know that? Well, my problem had number of moles in it. Now remember, I told you ideal gas law is the only gas law that actually contains the number of moles within it. Within it. So um, I know when I'm given a mole sample or if I'm asked about the number of moles, I know I'm going to always be using the ideal gas law. Okay, so let's pull everything out. We have ideal gas law, just to rewrite it, is PV equals NRT. 
So our pressure in this case, we're looking for it. We're looking for the pressure. So I'm going to say pressure is our variable. Um, our volume in this case is 0 0.505 liters. The number of moles we found is 0 0.108 moles. And uh, the R that we're going to use, we have, to, we have three R's to choose from. We're going to use R dealing with atmospheres. So our pressure is wanted in the unit of atmospheres. So our R in the unit of atmospheres is 0 0.0821. And then our temperature in this case is 20 degrees Celsius. Don't forget, we always want things in Kelvin. So we're going to add 273 to make it 293 Kelvin. So if we multiply all these together and divide by 5, sorry, 0 0.505 to isolate our, our pressure value, we're actually going to get, oh, goodness, we're actually going to get um, 5.14 uh, atmospheres. So we, found, we just found out using the ideal gas law that our new pressure, or that our pressure in this scenario is 5.14 atmospheres. Awesome, great. So this actually can be used, we, all you have to do is just make, you have to make sure that you get all your variables out and just plug and chug essentially within this, gas, within this ideal gas law. Um, but there's also lots of fun things, fun things you can do with the ideal gas law, and one of them is to find the density of the gas. So we know that density is mass over volume, or grams over liters. Um, and actually, if you, if you um, rearrange the ideal gas law, you're going to get this to find density. Let's actually do that together. Let's derive this. All right, so we know our density is, um, uh, so we know our mole, grams per moles, is equal to our molar mass. And I'm going to just substitute mm as molar mass because um, it's not millimeters. I'm just going to shorten it instead of having to write molar mass out. Okay, I'm going to isolate moles because in, in my ideal gas law, I have moles. And so I'm going to isolate moles to, fi to figure out what it solves for. So I'm going to multiply both sides by moles. So we know our grams equals molar mass times mole. But I want to isolate our moles, so I'm going to divide by molar mass on both sides to cancel. So um, when I, our mole equals grams per molar mass. So in our ideal gas law, I'm going to substitute this N for grams per molar mass. So now I have pressure times volume equals grams per molar mass times RT. Okay. I want to get it so it's grams per liter because that's our density value. So I'm going, to, I'm going to divide both sides by RT to isolate the grams. So those cross out and I now have PV over RT equals grams per molar mass. Um, okay, so now I want to get grams by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by molar mass. So now my new, my new uh, formula is molar mass times pressure times volume over RT is equal to grams. And then I want to bring over my volume, because don't forget volume is measured in liters. So I want to divide both sides by volume, divide both sides by volume, and I get molar mass, so I can cross out my volume, molar mass times pressure over RT equals grams over volume, which is what I have written here, um, which in other words is grams over liters, we know volumes in liters, which is our density. Yay, we found density using uh, PV equals NRT, our ideal gas law. So there's lots of fun things you can do to find the ideal gas, with, with the ideal gas law, um, and lots of fun different things you can do, density being one of them, uh, and the ideal gas law is used in a lot of different ways.